Earlier this year, we got a chance to look at the prototype of the ZenBook 17 Fold OLED. A lot has happened since then and now the ZenBook 17 Fold OLED is finally available for purchase right now. And I got my hands on this device for the past two weeks or so and I've been using it. And in many ways, it feels like I'm using the Galaxy Z Fold 4. It somehow transported me back to the days when I first transitioned from a traditional slab phone to a foldable smartphone. And how does a foldable form factor translate to a Windows device? I think they work out pretty okay. So much so that I think foldable laptops are the future because ASUS actually sets a very strong precedent of what a foldable laptop should look and feel like when you're using it. And by the way, if you want to know the full technical details of the ZenBook 17 Fold OLED, then watch our other video at the top right corner there. And in that video, we have a deep dive into the strengths and also highlights and some improvement suggestions to ASUS for the next generation of the ZenBook Fold. Let's start with the obvious. This device can easily be folded and unfolded and you can swap between two form factors. It starts off as a standard laptop like this and I'll call this as quote-unquote mode 1 and then you can use it like a standard laptop like how it should be because you can see here it's just a standard 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen and then you can just you know have a keyboard trackpad there it's pretty standard right but when you need more screen real estate to look at stuff then you can just remove the keyboard and then you can see the display expands itself and then you can just maximize your display and then you can use it like this I'll call this as mode 2 because yeah, there's technically only two ways you can use this laptop. And in mode 2, you can use it as a giant touchscreen tablet or you can also pop out the kickstand and then put it on the table and use it like a quote-unquote desktop monitor AIO kind of situation going on there. And in many ways, this really feels like the Galaxy Z Fold 4. The phone starts off as a tiny little screen on the cover display here. And then when you unfold it, then you can view a lot more things and do more serious work. At least that's how I use it because it really looks and feels like a mini tablet. The same idea also applies to the ZenBook Fold as well. So it starts off as a traditional standard kind of laptop form factor and then you can unfold it to become a desktop monitor. It's 17.3 inches in size but it feels larger due to the 4x3 aspect ratio, making it taller rather than wider. Of course, with a larger display means that you can see more and do more. For example, multitasking is an obvious choice because you can open more windows side by side and place them at the same screen, it's in the same view. ASUS does have a special version of their screen expert utility for the ZenBook Fold that lets you easily arrange up to, I think it's three windows at the screen. So yeah, you can use that or just use the traditional windows snapping feature. But depending on what task you're doing, you might not need to use the keyboard and that is where the strength of the foldable laptop comes in. I don't know about you, but I tend to lean forward to the screen when I tend to read documents and whatnot. And instead of leaning forward, I can just unfold the laptop, bring the entire tablet closer to my face and then look at the document. It's just a lot more comfortable that way. And one thing I think ASUS did very well is have the keyboard detachable and connected wirelessly to this laptop. Now, for the Windows operating system, it tends to need a keyboard and mouse and or trackpad to do work properly. And to have the screen adapt to the presence of the keyboard is actually a brilliant idea and the transition between Mode 1 and Mode 2 is actually very smooth. I find it to be quite amazing that this transition is so smooth but I do wish Windows scaled differently between the two modes. For example, 125% in mode 1, as in this one mode 1, and then when I detach the keyboard then the scaling will become 150%. But that aside, I'm also surprised that ASUS made its hinge lock into position just like how Samsung's flex mode is supposed to work. And I'm not sure if Samsung is using a similar style of mechanism but I absolutely love how smooth this hinge is and also just how strong it is because if you want to use it as a touchscreen, yeah, it doesn't really wobble. And I also think that ASUS made a really good choice too. For foldable smartphones, the crease has always been a point of argument. If you want a hinge to be strong and can hold it into place like what we have here as in the angle, then the crease is going to be very deep. 
So how Asus tackle this issue? Well, they just make the curved radius a lot bigger, but the keyboard fits in between those two sides to make it look like a book. I think that this is just a brilliant design and it's very functional and yet aesthetically pleasing. But of course, I still want some other brands to tackle some glaring issues with foldable laptops, particularly the kickstand. As I mentioned earlier, we can pop off the kickstand and use it on the table by just placing it there. However, the angle of the kickstand is fixed. It's either open or closed and you cannot select anything in between. And given the verticality of this display, I find it just rather difficult to use because I'm always getting reflections from ceiling lights and the monitor is just way too tall. If I just place it at the standard height table, then yeah, the monitor is just way too tall. But I also have no idea what kind of hinge is strong enough to support the weight of this device. You see, ASUS is currently using a hinge that is reminiscent of the first generation of the Nintendo Switch kickstand. Sure, the kickstand of this laptop is sturdier than a Nintendo Switch, of course, but since you cannot select any angle, it's just kind of difficult to use. The Nintendo Switch OLED does have a cam mechanism kind of situation that you can actually select what kind of angle you want, but given that such a device is so heavy, I really don't think you can actually implement those kind of hinge into this device. Granted, this is the first generation of the ZenBook Fold and I am sure that there will be improvements for the next generation. And I can say that because ASUS did tell us that they are fully committed to the ZenBook Fold series of devices and this is not a one-off thing. And knowing that, I'm actually very glad honestly. I really like the form factor of this kind of foldable laptops and it reminded me when I first used the Galaxy Z Fold series and the trade-offs are pretty much the same between these two devices. Yes, it is heavier, thicker than a traditional laptop, but it also doubles or triples the thickness of an Ultrabook, but you don't have to bring duplicate devices and maintain your files and login credentials between two different devices or actually more than two different devices depending on how you use your stuff. Because for me, when I want a larger screen, then I can just unfold it and prop it up on the table. And then if I ever need it to be portable, then I can just put everything together, close it shut, and then I can bring it out with me. Actually, when this device is unfolded, it kind of reminds me of the Mobile Pixels 2X Plus video at the top right corner there because for that kind of portable monitor, you have to attach it to the back of your laptop to get an extra screen to use when you need it. But for this case, you just unfold the device, you get more screen to look at. Then yeah, you, you just don't need an extra accessory. And of course, you can also play some games on this kind of form factor. The unfolded display is in a 4x3 aspect ratio, somewhat similar to the Galaxy Z Fold series of devices, and I find myself enjoying some old games through emulation. I mean, look at games like Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Those games look great at this kind of aspect ratio. Combined with custom resolutions and also texture packs, it will look even better. You might also wonder what is the battery life like for a device of such size. That was also my worry at first, but going by what we have experienced with foldable smartphones, using it in an unfolded bigger display will definitely drain more battery and also quicker just because of brighter display, more pixels, and also your GPU need to work a lot harder. But since this laptop is essentially using an Ultrabook hardware, then the battery can actually last for a very long time. I managed to use it with Google Chrome heavy web browsing, some YouTube video, some Netflix mixed in between and also Spotify music at the same time, then it can get about 8 hours or so. That's actually very good. And then my second concern when it comes to this kind of devices is actually the durability. Asus sure made an emphasis on its durability because I inquired if there is a brush-like thing interface to prevent those kind of particles from going into the hinge mechanism and the answer is no. So that's kind of unfortunate. And then my other worry is that how many number of times that we can also open and close the device because this laptop is essentially more or less the same in terms of idea with the Galaxy Z Flip series because if you don't unfold the device, you cannot use it. Asus told us that you can unfold for like 
I don't know how many times, but it's like a few years if you unfold multiple times a day. I don't have the exact numbers, so I'll just try to find something and put it on the screen here. Um, so far, our usage with this device has not been long enough to comment on anything concrete. So unfortunately, yeah, so far it just works great. That's all I can say. And my third worry is about the durability of the screen. I'm not sure what's the difference between BOE and Samsung's method of creating a foldable OLED screen but I am certainly worried about this turning point as in the hinge part. I don't know if you fold and unfold even more times then will they get some sort of OLED fatigue or something like that in the material. Our time spent on this device is yet again way too short to say anything but so far it still works okay though I am sure that in time given that the companies involved, BOE and ASUS, will improve and bring better devices that are more durable and perhaps even lighter in weight in the future. And even the software part also needs a bit more improvement because currently Windows is kind of rudimentary to accommodate to these kind of foldable devices. And despite all of that, we can already look at Samsung and how foldable devices have evolved over the past few years. They are getting more mature over the years and the company's warranty policy, particularly here in Malaysia, have also become more inclusive, thus instilling more confidence into the customers to purchase such a device. But with that said, I am also sure that ASUS is going through the same sort of uphill battle that Samsung went through a few years ago. Being one of the first to enter the world of foldable devices is not going to be easy because, yeah, you need to ensure your customers that this device works it has a lot of benefits and then you try to change their mindset and whatnot it's just yeah same situation with the galaxy z series so i think that's it that's all we have to share with you about why i think foldable devices are the future they yeah there are a lot of advantages and so far i'm really liking this kind of form factor i can unfold using a bigger form factor Still a first-gen device, but I'm sure in the future they will improve even further.